Happy Easter, Happy Resurrection Day to everyone. It is because Jesus Christ died and resurrected over 2,000 years ago that we are preaching the good news today. And he came for one reason, and that reason is to save men from eternal condemnation by offering himself as a sacrificial lamp reconcile us back to God and open the way for us to assess, access God ourselves through his eternal blood of through his blood that he shed that established the eternal covenant between God and man which we call the new covenant and the one and only the last covenant so far today we want to look at a topic facts that billions will be in hell while few only a few will be in heaven somebody may be tempted to ask why this topic today yes it is because somebody died and rose again but his death is not useful to everybody because as many as received him, he gave power to become the children of God, even to them that believe in his name. There are some people who neither received him nor believe in his name. And most painfully, many of these people are in the church. Because those who believe in him must obey him. But there are lots of rebels in today's modern church and they don't care about the standard of christianity because they've been told by someone that it is about just making a confession with your mouth whether you change your lifestyle or not or not it doesn't mean anything you just need to believe in your heart and that's all that is required so Today we want to talk about why, I, I want to bring out some facts, why a lot of people, even among professing Christians, will miss a rapture and be in hell instead of making heaven or even dying their natural death and going to heaven. Before we continue, let us pray. Lord we have no other life to live except this one please father help us you let your word correct us let your word redirect our hearts as we hear from you lord we ask that you speak to us and give us give us enough supply of grace so that these words will not be held against us on the day of judgment but rather, we will look back and say, thank you, Lord, because I had a message that touched my heart. And since then, I never looked back. And today, I have made it. This is our desire, O oh Lord God. Heal our wounds. Heal our hearts. Heal our diseases. Heal our minds. Heal our broken hearts. Lord God, fix our spiritual health fix our relationship with you even as we cast all ourselves at your feet O oh lord confessing our helplessness before you that you alone you strengthen us as your word comes out with power in jesus christ's name we pray and now lord i rebuke every thief of the word i rebuke every thief of the word i rebuke every thief of the word they will never steal your word from us in jesus name amen so before i begin let me tell you this some years ago when i was rebelling against god because i had some reasons to question the authority of god and ask why god created satan at the first place and why he drove him down 
and why he allowed man to suffer, I asked a lot of questions. Uh, while I was in my ignorance and rebellion, the Lord showed me different kind of things just to convince me and win me back to himself. And one of the things he showed me is that I saw a man who just rushed back into his home and saw his pot of soup that was getting bad. It was getting soured. He took it hurriedly, put it in the fire, and he was eating it. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me, You see this man? He is boiling a pot of soup that has no life. Do you know the amount of gems, microorganisms, in this pot of soup that he is destroying? If this man is destroying these millions of gems because of inanimate soup, soup that has no life, just because he has the right to do it, he has the authority to do it as man. How much more do you think I, God, can do with the world anything I want to do with it? I'm just paraphrasing. And then he told me, Hosanna, you see the whole of this world, it is like this pot of soup to me. <laughs> No one at the Sami say, who is man that you are mindful of him? Who is actually man? Sometimes, sometimes when we become drunk, because of how much we have made, because of our degrees, because of how many children we have, because of how many awards we've received in life, because of our achievements or because of our beauty or handsomeness, when we become drunk with some levels of goods that we have, we tend to see ourselves as some, something very, very special. One day, as I was working in cathedral, uh, in St. Andrew's Cathedral, worry, as a pastor, one of the pastors told me, Hosanna, you shouldn't be holding camera to video you are a pastor and when i got home i was thinking about what he told me and i told myself that this man actually doesn't know where i'm coming from it's a privilege to work for god i was the head of the media but i used to video I told myself the real Hosanna that I know is not the one that stands in the pulpit to preach. It's not even the one preaching here. The real one I know is the one that had accident 2010. And his bones, my left leg became shattered. And a, a, a friend, a, a neighbor, we once lived together, former neighbor. He said he saw my bone, one of my bones, on a piece of my bone on the road, on the tarred road. So he plucked a leaf, picked it, and threw it into the bush. That is the real Hosanna that I know. The one that lied helplessly on the road that nobody wanted to help until a man called Jonathan, Mr. Jonathan Onokaimi, helped me and rushed me to the hospital. That is a real me. That is my definition. The real me is the one that lies on the bed and is totally unconscious of the environment. That is a real me, the one that snores at night. So, whenever your goods all your achievements gets into your head. Remember your weakness as a man. That we are all dust 
and we are heading to the grave. So when we look at the world and we see billions of human beings who are living in rebellion against God and begin to question God's authority and God's love that are you sure God is going to cast all these people into hell? I tell you, he will cast even more than the people you see in the world if everybody rebels against God. It's true. And we want to look at it's a number of things. And caution ourselves because the world we live in today is heading to a place of destruction. And except we repent and single ourselves out, we will all perish with those who are on their way to the place of destruction. That is the truth. So let us look at number one, the flood of Noah, Genesis chapter 7. Only eight people survived. Only eight people survived this flood. Meanwhile, I have just a few Bible... Okay, not few. Let me read this. Um, let's read the text. Matthew seven thirteen to 15. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many, many, there be, which go in thereat. Many, not few. Because straight is a gate, and narrow is a way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. This is Jesus warning that there is a broad way that leads to destruction, and Many, many find it. Many people are on that broad way that leads to destruction. Including, probably, you listening to me now, you may be on that way that leads to destruction. And the best thing for you to do is to come out. I talk to myself a lot of times, and I know that I don't have the stamina to withstand the horror and the terror of hell. I don't. don't want to be there. I will never be there. So I must do everything I can to escape it. There is no intermediate place. In case you miss heaven, you don't go to hell because you were kind of a good man that missed the mark. There's no place like that. Even though hell is categorized and punishments are categorized in hell, it is not a place for any human being to go. Let's look at another scripture. Revelation 1.7 Now, why I bring out this scripture is because it has something I want everyone to see. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall will because of him. Even so, amen. All kindreds of the earth. That means it is, it is going to be very, very terrible. Not just few, but all kindreds of the earth. All. It will will because of him. Heaven is a place for a prepared people. It is not a place for those who feel like entering. It is a place where people pay with their lives to enter. So, in Noah's time, only eight people were saved. Now, number two, what happened to the world that existed before now? I'm not talking about the world of Noah. Uh, in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, we are told that in the beginning, 
the world. It was without form and void, but it wasn't totally empty because there were three things in the world that God did not create in Genesis chapters 1 and 2. And those things are, there was a foundation because there was waters upon the deep, upon the surface of the deep. There was a foundation. Something was holding this water. There was a foundation. God did not lay any foundation in Genesis chapters 1 and 2. There was water. God did not create water. He only separated water in Genesis chapter 1 and chapters 1 and 2. And also, he did not create darkness. There was darkness upon earth. This actually points to the fact that as a, before the Spirit of God came and inspect, Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters. Something happened. That was inspection. There is a very high tendency, I'm not saying it 100%, but from scriptures, I believe that there was a world that existed before Adam and Eve were created. Yes. Pre-Adamic world. Probably there were humans, it may not be humans, but something was existing. What happened to it? You see, there was flood. Remember the days of Noah? God used flood to destroy and he said, I'm not going to destroy all humans with flood again. If at all a world existed, what happened to it? Oh, we think that, oh, there are seven to eight billion humans in, in the world today. So, God, do you mean God is going to send all this multitude of people to hell? Brother, sister, yes. Accept the change. If they don't change, they will all go to hell. Number three, remember Sodom and Gomorrah. Only four people were saved from a city. Only four. Even Lot's wife, who was saved but disobeyed by looking back, did not make it. She became a pillar of salt. Hell wasn't created for man. It is a choice for people to go there. Did God create hell for humans? No. God can't create hell for humans. Does God send people to hell? No. God doesn't send people to hell. So why would God cast people into hell on the last day? It is because men are rational beings, they can make choices the way Lucifer was created to be a rational being and he made his own choice to rebel against God. That is how man is. So God created hell for Satan and his fallen angels. But man has a right to choose life. God places before us life and death for us to choose. So we were all condemned. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. He sent his son to a world that condemned itself because of rebellion. That whosoever believed in him should not perish. So they were already perishing. But if you believe, you are saved. But those who do not believe in him, they are, they are condemned already. Already they are condemned. Because, why? Because they did not believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So you see that God is not, did not create hell for people 
and he's not sending people to hell. People are on their way to hell, but God sent his only begotten son to say, hey, stop going. Stop. Stop there. Don't move. Go back. Take this way and be saved. Believe in me. Follow me. And let me show you the way to life. But humans, most humans, says, they say, no, we don't want to follow you. We don't believe in you. So if you are rushing in your car, and you are on high speed and a traffic man stops you that hey stop the bridge just collapsed and he said no i don't want to listen to you it's my life and you move forward and you see a construction construction workers and they tell you please take this way this bridge just collapsed we have created a path although it is narrow but it will lead you to your destination just take this one you say no i don't want to take it i'm going straight ahead and you drive speedily and end up in the bridge who will you blame and that's how people are rushing to hell let me tell you one thing i've had series of revelations of people going to hell and ending up in a place of no return i've had series of warnings of people on their path to the place of eternal torment remember sodom and gomorrah now I read this Matthew chapter 25 verse 41 then shall he also then shall he say also unto them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed to everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels did you see the name of man there no it wasn't prepared for man it was prepared for the devil and his fallen angels. And number four, the fourth reason, number four, is the eternal condemnation of Lucifer and one third of the angels of angels in heaven. The fall of Lucifer and the angels that were in heaven. If you read uh, Isaiah chapter 14, 12 to 15, Ezekiel 28, 11 to 19, Revelation 12, 7 to 12, you will understand better what the Bible says that the serpent, the ancient serpent, the dragon, cast one third of the stars of heaven to the earth, fallen angels. And they were condemned forever. Forever. No remedy. So, those who used to cover the, the Lucifer who was created, and in him were precious stones. In fact, he was created primarily with precious stones and musical instruments fixed in him, in beauty. No wonder is using music. And a lot of musicians are in his hands. If they sinned and God condemned them, we don't know how many thousands or how many millions of them that were cast down. But Revelation 12 says, one third of the stars of heaven, they were all cast down to the earth. So if angels were cast down, why do you think that if, if, if angels that have celestial bodies were cast down to the earth and humiliated forever and a place called hell is prepared for them, not just hell, but also a lake of fire prepared for them, why do you think that those who disobey 
are going to escape the fire of hell. Now, let me read this for you. Uh, this again, Matthew 25, 41. Then shall he say also unto them, on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed. Why cursed? Because you decided to follow the one that rebelled against God. They are mighty in strength. They had supernatural powers. Angels are mighty in strength. You ordinary mortal decided to share in their punishment. So, please listen. Hell was never created for humans. If God condemned Lucifer, let us be afraid. And let that fear drive us closer to God. Because those who fail are going to face eternal punishment like Lucifer himself. He has been condemned and he is condemned forever. Let's not be part of his condemnation. He's doing everything possible to make sure that he wins the whole world to himself. Then let's look at biblical prophecies. There are some biblical prophecies. Number five, biblical prophecies. Isaiah chapter 5, 13 and 14. Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are famished. And the multitude cried up with thirst. Therefore hell Hell, listen, hell had enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. Just listen to this. Hell had enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And the glory and the multitude and their pomp and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Hell had enlarged Asif. A lot of people are going there and they are rejoicing. But when they get to the destination, they are in a hurry to, they will weep forever. Please don't go to hell. Don't. Don't go to that place. Repent. Repent of whatsoever thing that remains that you need to repent of. I repent every day. I repent every day. Who told you they don't offend me? They offend me. Do I get angry? Yes. Do I make mistakes? Yes. Am I perfect yet? I'm not perfect. I repent every day. Do I have my own struggles? I have my own struggles. But I believe and I know that I'm saved but I must struggle and keep working on working out my salvation with fear and trembling as we await the return of the Lord listen to what Jesus Christ said Matthew 24 24 and uh, let's read this one first for there shall be Arise first Christ and first prophets, and they shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. That means even those who are the elect, if it were possible, they will be deceived. So imagine those who are outside how much deception they are going to be bombarded with. Deception is very strong. That was a tool Satan used against Adam and Eve. The same tool he wanted to use against Jesus. 
in the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4 the same tool is using against the people of the world today Satan is a god of this world a lot of people are following him not caring about the consequences of following Satan first Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and giving heed to giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons these are the days and because a lot of people are giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons hell shall be filled up it has already enlarged itself and it shall be feed up we have to be wise as God's children then again number six the battle of Magadon in the battle of Magadon there is going to be very terrible there is going to be a gathering of a terrible crowd Revelation chapter 20 7 to 9 Satan shall gather the whole world to fight against God and they are described as as a as their number as a sand of the sea that means they are going to be so many they will be deceived and they are going to rebel against God terrible they will be deceived to the point that they will say okay now we have to rebel against God and they will be recruited to go and fight against God himself but they shall be destroyed by the word of Jesus Christ this is number seven the book of death and the book of life Revelation chapter 20 verse 12 and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open and another book was opened which is a book of life and the dead were, were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works now listen there is a book one book which is the book of life and there are books which I call, even though it is not directly called the book of death, but all those who will face the eternal death are written in that book. Their names are inscribed in that book of death. How many books of life? One. How many books of death? They are not numbered means there are many look at it again and books we are open and another book just one those who are on their way to eternal destructions their names are written in books and those on their way to eternal life is just one book this, this tells us that there are books of death and just one book of life one book one book of life and many books of death we don't know how many so if people if the people that are actually going to heaven are so many then we should have books of life but just one but the book of death there are many 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 books please let's call ourselves to order and let us know that this world we're living in we come to an end in fact it's coming to an end number eight rebellion of today's multitude look at the multitudes of people today rebellion of the multitudes today 
Multitudes of people are rebelling against God. Look at what happened in Brazil. People trying to make mockery of the death of Jesus Christ. They made mockery of God. Millions of people gathering together to mock their maker and their savior. A lot of people are rebelling against God today. And if they die in that rebellion, they will go to the place of eternal destruction. This is the truth. Nobody can change it. It is the pure truth. Then, let's also consider some of Jesus' um, teaching. Jesus Christ taught us that we should enter into the narrow gate. Uh, Matthew 7, 13 to 15. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Only few find it. This is a teaching of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ never told us that a lot of people are going to go to heaven. But he says, only a few find this narrow path. So, even before he died, he knew it. That only a few will listen to him. Only a few will be saved. And this is truth. Only a few people. Only just a few. So our job is to make sure that we are among this few. Then, number 10, the warnings of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ actually warned us a lot of times. Jesus warned many, many times. He warned us many, many times. And um, I tell people that I haven't seen in the Bible anyone that want against the danger of hell more than Jesus Christ. Both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Name one person that talked about hell, hellfire more than Jesus Christ because he knows what it is the same one through whom grace and truth came the same one who is the truth the way and the life warning people about hell more than every other preacher and every prophet in the bible strange look at it warnings of Jesus Christ and you will know that hell is a dangerous place and that many people are going there billions of humans will end up in that place that is the truth whether we like it or not this is the truth and the word of God we never go back to him for it it must accomplish the purpose for which the word is sent now let's look at another reason. God's eternal word. God's word is eternal. It cannot change. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. Mark chapter 13 verse 31. The word of God will never pass away. The word of God will not fail and the word of God will never pass away. So if you think that Maybe one day God is going to change his mind. No. Then look at God's justice system. God's nature. And his justice system. God is the only judge. I liken God to a judge who can sentence his only son to death. Because he deserves it. And then goes home to cry. And mourn the death 
of his only son. Not because it is not in his power to save that his child, but because the child deserves the death because of his wrongdoing. It is in the nature of God to give justice to whosoever deserves it. God is not a partial God. The justice system of God is different from the justice system of this world. So if you think that God is going to say, oh, because, oh, there are too many people going to hell. Let me change my mind. He will never do it. So if you think that because there are billions of people who are rebelling against God, let me tell you, if you join them, you will go to the same place. Some people say, oh, do you mean that, look at the hundreds of religions in the world, do you mean that all these people are wrong? I'm telling you, yes. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by Him alone. If anyone tries to go to the Father, he will never get there except through Jesus Christ. He is the only mediator. For there is no other name given among men by which must, we must be saved other than the name Jesus. Then again, finally, look at the nature of God. How God actually destroyed the very people he saved. Look at the children of Israel, his own children, the one he showed signs and wonders and brought them out of Egypt. The same God started destroying them because of their disobedience. And all of them that came out of Egypt, 20 years upward, all of them died. And they stayed in the wilderness for 40 years. Except Caleb and Joshua. The rest of them died. Only two people. Above 20 years. 20 and above. Only two survived it. This is the nature of God. So if you are a child of God and you feel you can live your life the way you want. The day God weighs you and sees that you are no longer fit for the kingdom. He will place you in the place that belong where sinners belong because in heaven nothing unclean gets there i don't know who i'm talking to today but i want to tell you that jesus christ has died those he died for must do everything possible to obey the one that died because the one that died is the same one that is coming to judge the world again Let me read for you Revelation 3.3. 3. Remember therefore how thou, hast, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou wilt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. For thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which had not, have not defied their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Those who walk with God and fall off, their names will be wiped out of the book of life if those who serve God faithfully but were not faithful to the end are being removed from the book of life what about those who never said God at all what about those who came in and are lukewarm and were never serious 
please let's get serious with our Christian lives. This a drawing here. When the Son of Man is going to ask every one of us to render account, let us pray. Lord, we don't want to follow the multitudes. We don't want to follow the multitude that are on the way to the place of eternal destruction. Therefore, we ask that you release your grace upon us. Help us to love you, help us to follow you, help us to do your will, so that we can escape your wrath. We know there is a beautiful place you have prepared for us. But unfortunately, only a few people will enter. Lord, help us to be among the few. Also strengthen us, give us a grace to one people and preach the truth to as many that are lost and are wallowing in sin in the world. Thank you, Lord, because we know your grace is ever sufficient for us. Remember those who are sick, those who are having troubles with their health, Father, heal them. Those who are having financial difficulties, Father, step into their situation. You've graduated, you're waiting for your results, you're waiting for appointment, receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for as many that are having one challenge or the other, even those who need life partners. May the Lord God Almighty connect you and give you your life partner in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I remember as many who have been supporting this ministry that you will release your blessings from heaven upon their lives. As a gift, Lord, bless them. Let their hand never run dry. Let their pockets never be empty. And Lord God, I ask that as many who support your work, even in their local churches, will pray that you will help them to enter the kingdom to use their resources to build so that they will enjoy and reap everything that you have prepared for them. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please share this video with someone. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to this channel. You can visit our website, tnwcfan.org. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.